Mountain News this morning, an Eastern Kentucky farm holds a festival event in order to help out its furry friends. And one Eastern Kentucky city hosts a festival celebrating culture and traditions here in the region. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good Monday morning to you. It is 532. I'm Dakota Makris. Thank you so much for joining us. And the weekend's over, Brandon. It, every 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 Monday morning, I'm just going to say how fast it blew by <laughs> because it does. It's yes. Like, you know, it's Friday, then bam. You it's blink Sunday and night. then it's yes. Monday again. Yes. Yep, it uh, flies by. Oh, well, we're here. And we're here. And uh, again, it's a new week. It's a new month, a too. New month, yes. November today, starting off uh, on a cloudy note. Let's take a look and see what's going on across the region at UVA Wise. And you see those clouds rolling in there in the overnight. I think they kind of started rolling in late last night. But again, just kind of keep that in mind that uh, we are cloudy this morning, but the clouds are basically on the way out. It's going to be sunny by this afternoon, so that's some good news. 40s and 50s right now. Uh, actually dropping some temperatures there down to 50 in Hazard. Looks like our warm spot now is 51 in Prestonsburg. So again, we're seeing a little bit of a difference from this time yesterday uh, where several spots are a little cooler than they were this time yesterday morning, including uh, Somerset, Moorhead, and Ashland off 5 degrees colder. Breakfast forecast with your frosted weather weeks. Well, looks like it's going to be a pretty stable temperature all the way through about mid morning, and then we'll start to see those clouds break up a little bit. Once the sun gets out, we'll see a little bit of a relief by this afternoon. Today, though, will likely be the warmest day of this week at 57. Sunrise this morning, almost 8 o'clock, if you can believe that, but that won't last for too much longer because we've got daylight saving time ending here at the end of this week. Sunset tonight at 635. Dakota. All right, Brendan, thank you. A Lexington Haunted House tradition carried on during the weekend in remembrance of 31-year-old Ty Abner. Abner was killed last week. His husband and the community came together to put Ty's love for life on display. Dozens of people showed up to enjoy the creepy course Ty worked on for several weeks. It was his passion. It was something he loved to do. Uh, he, he enjoyed the camaraderie of having people here and he enjoyed raising money for the Humane Society. It helps us all to kind of cope and to know that he was a part of all of us and he'll still live on through everything he's worked for and, and tried to do. Equal to the chilling scares within the house were the warm embraces shared by people who knew and loved time. An update on caring costumes, a Lexington organization dedicated to donating Halloween costumes to those in need was burglarized. Shortly after a costume fair, several boxes of costumes were stolen. Shelby Lofton gives us an update. Who would take costumes? Caring Costumes wrapped up another successful costume fair days before Halloween. We load them up in our car, we take them to the costume fair, we hang them up. The children come through and pick out their costume and then we have a lot of leftover costumes that we just store and put away till next year. Co-founder Kathy Phillips says a caravan of cars full of costumes went back to her house. It's where she and Robin Anderson, also a co-founder, store everything. And a lot of costumes made it to the basement um, with the racks, but several boxes we just left in the garage. Phillips says she realized something was wrong while working on a costume request. I was looking for a specific size. I couldn't find it. And I was like, where are the new costumes? She says she walked out to her garage, the spot where boxes upon boxes full of new costumes sat was empty. Philip says someone broke in. Shocked and very sad. She says those accessories and outfits could have gone to homes who needed them. I hope someone's wearing those costumes tonight, to be quite honest. The moms behind carrying costumes say they're not letting the burglars steal their Halloween spirit. People are going out back out there and talking to their friends and collecting more costumes. So we're trying to restock, get our, get our costume boxes full again. They're taking a sour trick and turning it around to be a sweet treat for someone else. In Lexington, Shelby Lofton, WKYT. Now, Phillips encourages everyone to consider donating their Halloween costumes. Caring Costumes is also requesting donations from stores with leftover inventory. The pair will pick up, clean, care for, and give away the outfits to children 
who need them. The second annual Fall Festival in Wolf County wrapped up Saturday, featuring a haunted barn, haunted trails, haunted a zombie walk, a witch's ride. The festival ended with food and craft vendors. Despite some wet weather, Wolf County tourism members say the attendance rate of the event was great. I would say that we've brought in several new visitors to our town, and so hopefully this will be like, a, you know, we've tried to make it an annual thing, and next year maybe we'll get more lucky with the rain and stuff and um, have an even better turnout. Leaders say the county is already preparing for next year's festival with plans to keep making it bigger and better. The annual Three Mile Creek Farms Halloween Bash hosted by Antiques by the Creek wrapped up yesterday. Our Chaz Jenkins attended the spooky event. Held during the last weekend of September, ending on Halloween, <laughs> with proceeds going towards the farm's rescued animals. But today is free. The, our last day we always do free for the community, the kids, and the people that's not got to come, which we don't want anybody not to come to our pumpkin patch. If you don't have the money to get in, we pay your way in. So nobody's turned away because of money. Giving the children of the county an opportunity for fun. A lot of kids in this community can't afford to go to these pumpkin patches far away. So we wanted something for the kids in this community to be able to, and they've been kids that come that's never been to a, a anything like this. And it is such a blessing to see those kids have fun and have something to do in this community. Especially during like the Halloween season because there's a lot of mischief that the kids could get into. But with something like this here, there's not really a lot for the kids to do. In this area, you have to drive an hour to two hours to three hours away. Seeing participants coming from surrounding counties and states. I guess it's all in part of getting a break from where you're from. Getting a break from where you're from. That's why a lot of people go from here to other places and then people from other places come to here. Thankful for that support from everyone who comes out and enjoys the Halloween fun. Me and my wife would never be able to afford to rescue animals and feed them all winter long without the help of the community. So, and we love the animals and once they come here, they have a home forever, they really do. Already looking forward to next year's frightening fun. In Letcher County, Chaz Jenkins, WYMT Mountain News. Elkins says they saw around 70 children participate each day. Pikeville's Moonshine Music and Artisan Makers Festival wrapped up Saturday. Attendees were entertained, plenty of shine, good music, good food, as well as artisans and craftsmen. Officials with the city of Pikeville say the event was a major success and look forward to seeing what the festival brings in the future. It's good to get back out and start doing events again and uh, having the festivals and show, showcasing the city of Pikeville and uh, all the vendors and artisan vendors that we have available to us. Officials say they hope for a bit more sunshine at next year's festival, but it was still an overall success. Dila de los Muertos, also known as Day of the Dead, begins today. It's a holiday with origins in Mexico, a time to honor family members and friends no longer with us. Ruth Gonzalez Jimenez, UK Latino stu a student community specialist, shares this year the community is invited to get involved. They're making an altar with pictures and memorabilia of people held dear. In 2020, the event was brief due to the pandemic. Now, attendees will share a meal, watch a movie, and hold a vigil. It's a program that is meant to be healing, that's meant to be, you know, celebratory of, yes, we've done, you know, and, and seen a lot of hurt throughout COVID-19 and throughout so much um, these last 18 months, but this is a time that we really hope our community can slow down. You can bring a picture or item to add to the altar. It will be displayed in UK's Student Center throughout November. Volunteers with Toys for Tots are preparing for this year's holiday season. Toys for Tots is a countrywide program led by the United States Marine Corps Reserve Unit to give a child in need a joyful Christmas. Coordinator with the South Central Kentucky, Greg Sims, says an upcoming fundraiser event is scheduled for November 6th. The event is sponsored by Wildcat, Harley, and Backroads of Appalachia. They're having a bike run, and it's a donation of a toy or a, a monetary donation of your choice. And I believe that there'll be some giveaways and some uh, handouts and little trinkets and such. To learn more about Toys for Tots and the upcoming bike run, you can visit our website. We just had this morning a famous actor opens up about his mental health in a new docu-series. We'll have those details on the way.
I know this. I know I say this a lot, but strap in for this rather roller coaster ride because this week could get interesting. I'll have the latest in about three minutes.